The way you stay in the driver's seat throughout the sales cycle is by being intentional with every part of the process. The intention is the driving force here. You're listening to Prospecting on Purpose, where we discuss all things prospecting, sales, business, and mindset. I'm your host, Sarah Murray, a sales champion who's here to show you that you can be a shark in business and still lead with intentionality and authenticity. Tune in each week as we dive into methods to connect with clients, communicate with confidence, and close the deal. Welcome to Prospecting on Purpose. Our mini series comes close to a close with our sixth crucial skill for effective selling, which is that productive sellers remain in the driver's seat throughout the entire sales process. This includes being the driver during individual meetings and throughout the life cycle of the sale. This skill is particularly important because it essentially combines every other skill into one to ensure that we stay in control, leading our clients to where we need them to go. If we maintain control, we win the business. Now, using this driver analogy, there are many ways that a meeting can veer off the highway. The prospect asks us an off-the-wall question and yanks that steering wheel right out of our hands. Now, they're the ones behind the wheel taking us on an eastbound off-ramp when we needed to be traveling north on our next step in the sales process. Easy examples of this would be the client asking a ton of product-specific questions and we get stuck in this loop of answering product features, which we know they'll probably forget. Or an objection surprises us and we're not prepared for it and now we're not only heading eastbound, but maybe we're rolling that bus right into our competitor's territory. If we don't have a grasp on running the sales cycle and maintaining control, we're just spinning our wheels. The way you stay in the driver's seat throughout the sales cycle is by being intentional with every part of the process. The intention is the driving force here. The reason this podcast is called Prospecting on Purpose is that we are selling with intention. Additionally, under this intention umbrella here, we have three subcategories. The first is that we're utilizing the other crucial skills throughout the sales meeting. Probably not a shocker for us if we've been following along with the mini series. We are embracing our rock star salesperson habits by asking the right questions and listening to the answers. And then this last subcategory that we haven't discussed on the show yet is that we're assigning action items for ourselves and often for the customer to keep things moving forward and maintaining our driver's seat position. So what is an intention? An intention is an idea that you plan or intend to carry out. It's our goal, purpose, or aim of where we're heading. It provides both us and our clients direction and focus. Since we're behind the wheel, the intention is that GPS set point we're aiming for, and that set point can be many things depending on where we're at in the cycle. Here's a quick example outside of a formal sales meeting, but still part of the sales process. If we're prospecting for business, maybe we're going to a networking event, Let's say then that our intention is to meet a new contact at a key target company that we are not currently doing business with. Okay, that's one of our intentions, meet a new person at the firm. An expanded intention would be to identify who is the key contact that we would need to get to at that organization. It'd be great if we met the right decision maker at our networking event, but when we're prospecting, that's not always the case. Okay, so networking event, what is our plan? Do we know other people there who maybe know these people we're trying to get to? Can we ask for an introduction? Do we have our icebreakers handy to open a door to a conversation? If we meet this person and we have our icebreaker, what's our pivot point then to get the meeting? Have we researched their firm ahead of time? Do we have a script outlined in our heads to ask on how to build this foundational relationship? So let's say we're at this event and we meet Sandy, who works for our target company. Awesome. Sandy is super friendly. It turns out we have the same purse or our kids both play soccer. Whatever bonding path our icebreaker took us down, great. Maybe we even dipped our toe in the water of how our businesses could work together and she mentioned we should sync up with Derek in her office. Now, can we pivot to our ask before leaving the interaction? Hey Sandy, you know what? It's been so fun to talk to you. I am such a fan of XYZ Company. I'd love to learn more about what you're building over there and how I can support your needs. Do you mind if I reach out and schedule some time on yours and Derek's calendar to connect? Then we get her email, we exchange cards, we follow up, and we set up a time to start our pitch. We went in with a plan and we got business out of that networking event. 
We didn't stay at the food table with our work BFF, who we see every day, or chatting it up at the bar with the people we already do business with. Everyone knows what I'm talking about here because they're all guilty of it. But this is what I mean when I say we end up spinning our wheels. We're doing the actions and activities that seem like prospecting, but without a plan and an intention, it is not pushing our business forward. So in addition to prospecting, this is applicable to every part of the sales cycle, every type of interaction you're having with your clients. I physically map out the process and I would encourage everyone to do the same. I build out an actual step-by-step map. What are the steps of our sales cycle? Who were we talking to at each stage? And what is the outcome we need from our interaction to get to the next stage? We are working towards the goal or intention at each stage until we close the deal. This is where we are using all of our other crucial skills in the process. So let's take this first sales pitch we set up with Sandy and her colleague Derek. A meeting where we're in the driver's seat starts with understanding our client's business model. We do this by asking for introductions, asking for their business model, and giving an overview of a high-level agenda. Hey Derek, it's great to meet you. Sandy, lovely to see you again. I hope Billy did well in his soccer game. Thanks for taking the time to meet with me. I know at Hypothetical Networking Event that you gave me a brief overview of XYZ Company. I'd love to hear from the two of you a bit more about your roles at the firm and the business structure you have. What are your goals? Where are you aiming to go? You know, this will all help me better cater my comments to your needs. Then we listen to the answer, and now we have a better idea of their business model. Maybe in that simple question, we uncover a whole other department that we can service with our product suite. We jot that down in our notes, and we will address it as an action item coming out of the call. Next, in this meeting, I usually launch into a quick agenda. Thank you for giving me that clarity on your business model. I appreciate your transparency. What you're building is really inspiring to me. And I know we have a great solution to help you meet your vision. My plan for our time together is to demonstrate how my product will help you with your business here, here, and here. I can give a quick overview of the software and answer any questions you may have. Is there anything specific you're hoping to get out of today's meeting? This question is... Is there anything specific you're hoping to get out of today's meeting is so simple, but it demonstrates respect and it gets us to the next step via a much more direct route. Now we know we can take the interstate to get there faster instead of taking the winding scenic route where we're just going through the motions. This quick action prevents us from wasting everyone's time for an hour if they have a specific need they're hoping we're going to solve. I have a quick sidebar example here, and I'm sharing it because I know it will resonate. For my own business, I've been deploying new software technologies, and so I've been the recipient of many recent pitches, and I will literally tell the salesperson on the intro call what my immediate need is that I'm hoping their software will solve. And more often than not, they launch into their autopilot spiel, their autopilot pitch. They're showing me features that are not applicable to my business or I won't need it for another year. And when that happens, I just let their words roll off my brain because it's not relevant to me in the moment and I don't want to waste my brain space on things that are irrelevant. This is a great example of spinning wheels but not moving the exchange forward. And usually as a result, they don't get my business. And in fact, they usually get some unsolicited feedback from me on why they're not getting it. Obviously, I'm respectful and kind, but I'm looking to partner with individuals and companies who listen to me and solve my problems. So keep this in mind when we're on the opposite side and we're the ones doing the pitch. I know this audience is varsity team, so I'm not worried about it, but it's alarming how often autopilot mode happens. So it's really easy to differentiate ourselves if we break out of that autopilot mode and it can be really just as simple as asking for the intros, asking for your business model, and asking what do you need to cover during our time together. Okay, back to our sales meeting, back to Sandy and Derek. With those questions, they have communicated back to us what storytelling and assets we're going to use at this stage in the cycle. So let's say that they've shared with us that they are the directors of their departments. They don't get into the weeds on the details. Sandy and Derek aren't going to get pitch slapped by us. We're not showing them spec sheets and white papers. We're talking business model and how our product supports their goals and their roles and in their organization. 
And you know, if they serve an objection to us, we are prepared with our answers. We're pivoting it back to keep us on our course because we have our destination in mind. We know what outcome we're getting from that meeting because we are in the driver's seat and we are moving that sale forward. What we need to identify before going into this meeting or any meeting, any stage, what is the next step in the sales process and how do we use this hour of time with Sandy and Derek to get that outcome from this first meeting? In our example sales map here, we're not yet asking about their purchasing department or jumping straight into product features or pricing plans. We've mapped out the journey and we know that those conversations fall at later stages in the process. Maybe our next step from this meeting is that we'll need to do a larger demonstration for their whole team. Or perhaps they want us to present to their client. So we're going to make Sandy and Derek look like rock stars to their client who really have the ultimate sign off. Maybe our two engineering teams need to sync up and that's when we'll use our product specifications. So to round out this meeting, to get to our next step, the final end point is to identify action items and next steps. Leave yourself time for this during your call. Prep your presentation in a way that leaves time for question, recap, and action items. The last thing we want is for our client to have a hard stop at the hour, rushing off, and we didn't address next steps. All right, so action items. An action item is a specific task or action that needs to be completed in order to achieve a larger goal for the project. Clear and concise statement that describes what needs to be done by whom and by when. I'll share my process for identifying and recapping action items if it's helpful. When I'm going through a meeting, I'm always taking notes. If I'm taking notes while I'm typing and an action item comes up, I will type a capital AI for action item. And then if I'm writing in my notepad, usually I'll write AI in the margin with like a circle around it. So when I go back to recap, everything's really easy and quick to find. So for this example meeting we just went through, Sandy and Derek asked us for an email that they could forward to their client to set up a joint meeting. Oftentimes, action can actually fall into the client's plate. Sandy and Derek asked us to give a demo to their whole team. That's no problem, but please let us know available dates that work for your whole team. Also, at the beginning of our meeting, we identified a different department that we could sell into. One of our action items to recap could be, Hey Sandy, you mentioned your colleague in product management is looking for a similar solution. Would you be able to put me in touch with that person? I'll send a recap reminder in my follow-up. Then in the follow-up email I send to Sandy and Derek, I will usually put kind of two headers with different bullets below. So the first header is essentially, Attached, please find the information or deliverables we discussed. And I'll outline them with bullets below. And then the action items that I need from the client, often I'm very direct and to the point, and I will put in bold header what I need from you. And I'll recap the client's action items in bullet points below. It's not bossy. They appreciate it. It's clear. And it keeps the sales process moving forward. How many times have we received an email and we have to read through a whole novel to try to understand, do I need to do anything here? Let's be easy to do business with because that keeps us behind the driver's seat. If it's something as simple as bullet pointing and giving some marching orders, let's do it. Now, as you can see, I'm throwing out examples here to get us thinking. This will be different for every product, service, or sales channel. So, you know, take this, apply it to your needs. We all have to outline this for our specific product or service and the various clients that we serve. This episode is a great example of what it means to prospect on purpose. We're selling with intention and that makes it seamless to get to the sale. Which leads us to our next week's episode. The ability to close deals and generate repeat business. Sales are crucial. It's such a rush to close deals. But repeat business with clients that you build strong relationships is the true treasure. So we're going to get into both of those during next week's episode and our seventh and final installment of our mini series, Seven Crucial Skills for Effective Selling. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Prospecting on Purpose podcast. If you loved what you heard today, subscribe to the podcast and please rate and leave a review. For more info on me or if you'd like to work together, feel free to go to my website, sarahmurray.com. On social media, I'm usually hanging out at Sarah Murray Sales. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next time.